Is it a country for young men or only for old men, at least where employment opportunities are concerned? This morning, joining me to take that conversation forward, I have Enoch, Diana, Edwin, and Deline. Edwin, uh, I cut you short uh, just yes, before yes, we went on the break. Cut me short. I was looking at this. Um, Olive, we are in the world of digitalization today, yes. and for such an organization to run and grow very fast, Okay, let me, let me just ask you a simple question. Mm -hmm. Probably your grandma, because what you're looking here is a grandma who's sitting in an, in an office. Your grandma right now, if you tell her to use the phone to probably create some strategic ways of how you can do, or just go and sit down, eh? sit, sit down and just use your laptop and create some strategic ways on how you're going to globalize national employment for every youth in every county to be aware. Some people don't even know this thing exists, by the way, Absolutely. to make matters worse. Yeah. So if you tell your grandma today to do that, do you think she can do it? I guess it's a no. At that some point, it's a definite no. And this is the same kind of a person you're looking at. We're looking at all the people who cannot come up with a strategic way or even means. Actually, take for example KRA right now. KRA is struggling on how to build a way that is going to, to deal with digitalizing charging you that is as a YouTube channel which is being paid by YouTube. It's looking for a way to charge all the people that are working on the digital market. Now that is KRA, for instance, which is really working hard to come up with a way that's going to charge that. How with this old lady, I don't know how she handles her stuff on DO when it comes to digital or whatever. And how will she be able to make and create a very good awareness for such kind of a, you know, an organization which is looking at dealing with all national youth, every county. We need someone who can be able to get into every space, use both digital, use both ground and reach to all these people. Yes, we understand that every county has a way that reaches to their youth, but this is something that needs more extra energy. She doesn't have the energy for okay, such kind of Okay, but one of thing. those people who say, you know, she's in an advisory capacity, mm -hmm. that the technical aspects of that, what you're talking about, uh, will be done by uh, a management team. Great. Now, I'm going to go to this. You That's know, it overseas. comes from a leader. You oversee something. You oversee. I understand. She can oversee. But the question is, what are the recommendations? Mm -hmm. One of them was HR. Is she in a capacity and capability to be able to assign that person, you run this, you run that, you run this? I don't think she's in that capacity. Mm -hmm. Because you're looking at someone. See, this is something that has been there for only three years. It's something that is, everyone is expecting and they've been expecting to have at least at least, let's say even 5,000 youth jobs, huh? mm -hmm. uh, even 5,000 is a lot, let's say 1,000, create 1,000 youth jobs. Now, even if she's going to oversee, we are looking at the capability to appoint someone, appoint this one, this one, this one to run. I don't think she's in that capacity. Right. I don't think she's able to do that kind of appointment, which is what we need. HR is one number one thing. She doesn't have the experience for seven years. Yeah. I don't think we should say even two years. That is someone who's just been in politics as right. an MP. Okay. Uh, Deline, what has, your be, what has been your experience? Uh, did you, you know, when you left school, did you first seek out employment before getting into entrepreneurship? Yes, definitely. I tried to seek employment just like any other Kenyan. You know, we have this culture. You graduate, you tamak, and you say tamaking has become a norm now. You meet your friends out there, I'm a na tamak, na tamak, na tamak. And it will continue like that over and over again. And I feel, let's not even talk about Mary Wambo's issue. Let's just talk about simple things like, in reference to just the concluded census, that opportunity, I believe, was meant for the youth, or rather most youths. But who did you see in our houses coming to do the census? How many youths did you see lining up and applying and their applications being rejected or being thrown even in the trash? So many. So I feel... We, should, we need a strategy, even as the youth. How do we come up with these opportunities ourselves instead of waiting for the government? So as the youth, we need to strategize, come up with these strategies, come up with these initiatives, present them to the government, tell them this is what we want, and you can work from there. Okay. Um, how long did you tarmac? Around three years. All right. You're still tarmacking? <laughs> yes, yeah. well, I'm still tamaking. Okay, so yeah. at, at what point did you decide, okay, I can't just, you know, okay, I can't just keep sending CVs. I need to start actively doing something, even as you say, yeah. you search for a job. At what point did you make that decision? The moment I realized that I will 
always keep waiting and waiting and that is was the turn back point and I decided you know what I need to make something for myself so I decided to come up with a company myself uh, it's a mental health consultancy and training firm and I'm working towards that together with my colleague because <coughs> this government is just a joke when you say mental health consultancy what does that mean well uh, I run an organization with my colleague it's called your mind matters it's a mental health consultant consultancy, consul, what, consultancy <laughs> and training firm. Basically what we do, we promote mental health, well-being and resilience, not only in the workplace, even in the society at large. We also go to schools. For instance, in schools, we offer training to teachers, mental health literacy, how they can spot mental health disorders among the students, what approaches to take and how to help the students. We also do training for the students, how to identify mental health issues among us themselves. And also, we do training on how to identify learning disabilities or students who have learning disabilities for teachers. Is that what you studied in yeah. university? Yes. All right. It sounds like a noble endeavor. Yeah. And what was it like trying to get that business on the ground? Were you able to get any assistance from government? Definitely not. I'm actually string, struggling my way up with it. Because nobody's there to give us capital as they use. So you have to be creative yourself and come up with the capital, come up with the ideas, come up with the proposals and the concepts, you know. So generally, for organizations, we do employee assistance program, critical incidents, debriefing, and trauma, generally for productivity, as far as the organizations are concerned. All right, we should engage you further when we are dealing with mental health uh, as, a, as a subject matter. Enoch. Yes. You're a graduate student. Yes, I'm a graduate student. Now, when, when, you know, when you get into the job market or when you decide to go into business yeah. for yourself, there are those who argue that you would, may not want to start from the bottom <laughs> up. You'll say, I have a, in fact, a master's mm -hmm. degree mm -hmm. and therefore minimum salary mm -hmm. I should get is at least, okay, I, I don't know what the, the, the market <laughs> rate is, but then you'll say, no, 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 yeah. I don't want to start like in the storeroom, mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. if that is the job that is available. Mm -hmm. I want to start in a management, mm -hmm. entry-level management position. Which is not going to happen anyway. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm so shocked on what I continue hearing, the narrative in our education system that has imprisoned us into go to school, read your books, go out there, search for a job, wear your tie, you know, smile with a suit every early in the morning and, you know, make people proud in the, in, in the, in the working areas. Um, let me turn this into a different perspective from what uh, experience has given us. Uh, when I was doing my undergrad, I'm, I started actually doing um, a certain job in, you know, along Mombasa Road as, um, um, I don't know, packing uh, bottles in a certain company. And I was earning actually 15000 That is when I was still an undergrad. My actually career uh, uh, and, uh, you know, vision that I had was actually to, to be an anchor and, you know, work in the media house or radio presenter or something like that. So I thought, how would I achieve this then? So I went and, and looked for a job. This job was paying me 15,000 shillings. Then when I was an undergrad, I did not see, um, you know, the badness of earning just 15,000. I thought, let me just get into that job, earn that money, just go and save a little bit and even finish my school and do other things. So the youth out there think there are jobs, but when you get into this job, you will feel, by the way, you're not paid enough. You will just quit. Or retrenchment will catch up with you and you will leave. So thereafter, I continued looking for you know opportunities as well, and then I hit into a good corporate institution. Yes, and um, well, I worked for quite a while. You know, patient space. You know, we see people coming in, out. You know, others growing the ladder, up the ladder, and you are stagnant there. So what happened is, I just thought maybe the skills I had then, you know, did really not matter a lot where I was because I didn't see myself growing. I, di I didn't see myself being promoted. I didn't see myself earning a better salary than I was there. So what else? Go back to school and try and, and you know, and, and reach your skills. Oh, yes. Okay. So that's what exactly what I did. So going back to school, number one, somehow leaves me in a, a situation that I'm, I really don't know what my future looks like. But then what, uh, uh, you know, gives me hope. Uh, like um, Chinua Achebe sometimes said that um, the world is like a mask dancing. So if you want to see it from another perspective, you don't need to stay where you are. You just have to turn around. So then if I thought that these skills cannot really give me the job that I wanted, let me go back to school and see what happens. But what gives me hope more, and even the youth out there who are listening to us right now, this is a platform that has brought us not just to rant, 
not just to make noise and say, you know, the government doesn't really take care of us. I mean, there are no jobs. Corporate institutions cannot, you know, uh, take care of us in terms of what skills we have. Yes, they're looking for skills. God forbid, I don't know where they will get them from because every time you go, for a job interview, they will tell you, we will call you after two weeks. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, what I like to encourage the person who is listening to me, who is our youth. We are the majority, by the way, and we are so shocked that it's only two billion that was approved eh, and allocated to the Biashara Kenya Fund that merged the, uh, the youth enterprise, um, women enterprise, and, and all those ways of funds. I mean, just two billion for 85% population is, is not really justifiable. So let us start innovating our own thing. Social media has given us a platform, you know, to interact, engage. As much as we're also fearing that the government is also looking for other strategies of, you know, taxing highly what we, we're starting now doing, because the thing is, we are thriving online on YouTube. I mean, influencers, social media, socialites, I mean, social media, content creators, digital marketers, this is, these are the only jobs, actually, we have hope for in the future. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if the government continues again, now, you know, uh, uh, looking for strategies of even taxing us, then what do we have left? Right. There's nothing. So, just try and create something for yourself. I mean, social media has a lot for us. We can make more money. Go online right, writing, social media content. That's Come encouraging, on. Yeah, yeah, but just, just not fake news. Okay, <laughs> Jim Kitch Langat <laughs> has, has this to say. Uh, this Uhuru handshake. Government has nothing to offer the youth, just the old and some even illiterate. Bure Kabisa Majabu. Now let's add more voices to this conversation. Let's listen in uh, to um, Janet Nyamwamu in Kisi County. Let's hear what the youth in that county have to say on uh, job opportunities available to them. Well, I'm here in Kisi where we have a crisis in youth unemployment and I'm here with the youth, the, the CEC for youth, who is, going, who is handling the youths who come to his office every now and then to seek for opportunities and he's been handling them in a great way and he's going to tell us about the youth unemployment in Kisi. Uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is uh, Duke Mainga, HATA. I'm the CEC for youth and sports Kisi County. I'm um, privileged to have you to, uh, today this morning and uh, there is a major issue on the topic that you've raised on uh, youth and unemployment. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, the challenges and it's across the country, it cuts across the country and uh, I'm here this morning to uh, give my view on uh, as far as this issue is concerned. Uh, first, I think as a country we failed on planning. Uh, because uh, uh, when you wake up one morning and you realize that the appointment on the elderly in this country, people have served this country for so very many years, people have made a fortune through the, the government and the governments that have ever existed, it's quite unfortunate and kind of a mockery to the youth. So uh, I'm urging, or rather I'm advising uh, uh, His Excellence the President, because what it calls down to idiosyncrasy, or rather the character characteristics of uh, the man at the top, the kind of decisions he makes right kindly this is the, th the time we have a very very good constitution that is youth friendly but we've not been able to implement and uh, eventually what happens uh, young people are getting radicalized at the end of the day they're going to be extremists and uh, there's no way you can run with youth uh, resources because eventually what will happen, the government will be forced to invest more on security, invest more uh, on prisons because there will be an increased or rather uh, increased rate of uh, uh, crimi uh, criminals within the country. So it's, it's, it's quite painful. There's a lot of noise in social media and I think this is the time that the youth should come together and fight uh, for their space within this country. Yes. As the youth uh, CEC in yes. Kisi County, what advice can you give the youth who come to your office asking yes. for opportunities? All right. Sometimes uh, you can imagine, for instance, today we have more than 2,000 uh, young people graduating from Kisi Polytechnic. It's very, very painful and merciful when I see it as a young uh, leader thinking of the kind of challenges. Those who are still existing, those who come to my office on every day to seek for opportunities which for sure do not, do not exist. And uh, even the kind of bureaucracies that are within uh, uh, the government financing institutions that discourage young people. So majority of young people within, within this county or within the country are just uh, loitering within. They're doing nothing. For sure, it's a major crisis and all of us need to start talking about this. Uh, but at the end of the day, the man who makes the decision is the man at the top. 
if today the president said that for sure the resources that we're having, majority of the resources will be directed towards uh, creating uh, opportunities, creating uh, uh, favorable job employment opportunities for young people. Everybody will fall suit. Yes. Thank you, Duke. Uh, as, as you've heard, the government will be faced with a crisis and it will have to invest more on insecurity and uh, on prisons, as the CCA has said. From Kisi County, I'm Janet Nyamwamu. All right. Thank you, uh, Janet. Now, we're also getting views off of social media. I've talked about getting more vo uh, vo adding more voices to this conversation. And uh, there's a gentleman here, one second, by the name of Just Stephen. He says this, he is referring to the Public Service uh, Commission uh, drive to recruit interns into government ministries, departments, and agencies. And he says this is also a noble in initiative by the presidency to correct the ills of graduate unemployment, providing youth with much needed job skills and increasing the chances of employability. Because we've talked about, you know, you go apply for a job, you're told, okay, do you have the experience? Um, my, one of my producers, Ruth Muni, has told me to ask, uh, you know what about the youth who say they will not participate or they will not intern unless they're paid to intern? What do you say of those youth? Wow, that's a really good question. You know, it's, it's good that uh, that question has come up only because I think it's we, we as young people sometimes tend to be very... I think ambitious in what we want or what we expect to get from society and we expect things to be handed to us and that hasn't really been the journey for most people and even most successful people in the business sector now having that caveat and you have no reasonable ability or showcased ability for you to deliver on any task is totally ridiculous we also need to call ourselves out on that and I think we had another session on youth and um, employment uh, at the University of Nairobi. And one of the professors was telling us that by the time a student is in second year, he must, have, he must be an apprentice or an intern in an organization mm -hmm. where remember the people there when you're asking for these opportunities, they're not machines. If you talk to them and tell them that you're, in this, um, in, you're doing this course, which is in line with what your life mission is, and then you, you've only done first year and this is what you've learned so far and you'd like to do ABCD, most likely when people hear that story, they're most willing to give you a chance. So it's not about delivering your CV and then walking away. Push harder. Stay there and say, can I see at least any manager, you know, in this department? You push yourself hard and then you get, you get attached to someone. The internship policy right now, it's three months and you can, be, you can renew it once, which means you, you, you have a chance of uh, being in an organization for six months. You cannot say, let's say if you've not graduated, that you must be paid uh, something for internship. So remember the, the solution that we are proposing now is that even in your second year or third year, get an internship position. Get attached to at least a manager or anyone in any department. Whether it's even messenger service, do it, do something. I remember, um, you know, I could say from experience when I, I made a deal with an organization that I, I went to and I told them, I don't even want to be paid because I could tell that they don't have funds to, to afford having an intern. But I say to them, as long as you can give me after my three months of work, some recommendation letter, that is now what will help you get something else because that recommendation letter will encompass what you are able to deliver not what your what your degree and masters and diplomas and certificates say no what are you able to do yeah. now i've also worked in the media industry and i've been a general manager and we recruited people i would tell you that in the in the media industry we were looking at cameramen sound men and all these people and trust me your degree your fancy degree will not be what we're, we're interested in we'll put you to the task and we'll take you to the field uh, what is your attitude there? Are you able to pull cables, help the camera people, help, you know, are you able to do more than just, let's say, that task that you've said? So that, that just being a wholesome person, having the right attitude, being willing to help, keeping time, the ethics that you had, you had asked about, those are the values that will make you employable. Skills you can build up, build up on them later. And I guarantee you that, young people, please listen. Skills you can build up, I mean, the paperwork you can follow later. Have that willingness attitude. For example, the young man is saying he has an, a company. And say, for example, you get a partner to make an order for, uh, you know, several things. When you're looking for someone to employ, will you look for the papers or will you look for a young person who is willing to work, willing to learn? And even right now as we are, and we always have opportunities that we present as youth agenda again. Our, our yes, in as much as we do have certain minimum thresholds we require, but above that, we also need the right attitudes, the right 
willingness to work and don't focus on money when you're still young focus on the on what you're gaining from these experiences mm -hmm. there you're able to then negotiate better because nowadays most people are working on performance contracts mm -hmm. or contracts that end in one year and you have to renew it and by the time it comes to renewal it renewals we do an appraisal who are you as a person mm -hmm. are you someone that people enjoy working with if we brought another intern to work with you, are you able to interact with them well? What are your attitudes? Are you arrogant mm. or are you humble? So these are the things that, again, you won't get from school. So the whole reforms that need to be uh, initiated in our country also need to start with us mm. in our households. If you live with your siblings or you live with your children or your brothers and sister or whoever you live with, are you being honest with them and telling them what the reality out there is? You know, we need to be the ambassadors of the change that we want to see in the world. Okay. So I, th I do think that the interns would be, you know, the young, the young people would be totally uh, disillusioned to imagine that you'd come somewhere and start, uh, let's say, demanding for how much you want to be paid mm. when I cannot see the skills that you have or the attitude you're bringing or the willingness to engage uh, and deliver on, on your tasks. All right, before I, I come to you, Edwin, just let's uh, get some views uh, from uh, Melita, or sorry, from uh, from interviews that Melita Oletengas will carry out shortly. Melita, what do the youth in your county have to say about job opportunities and employment creation in the country? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Olive. We are coming to you from Nyeri. And of course, uh, unemployment among the youth has evoked a heated debate across the country. And it's no different here in Nyeri. Uh, considering the recent appointments by the government, uh, it has caused an uproar among the youth. We've been speaking to a number of youths uh, in the week. And uh, at the moment, I'm just going to get uh, uh, some of the sentiments regarding what they feel about the unemployment uh, situation here uh, in Nyeri. And remember, uh, a number of youths, particularly here in Nyeri, uh, I've gone to school, they've graduated, spending a lot of money, but coming uh, to, uh, to seek for uh, an employment, it has become a hurdle because uh, they end up uh, just finding mere jobs just to uh, get a living and uh, just sustain themselves uh, in the town. But uh, really, so many youths are just tamaking uh, in, uh, in different offices, the different uh, shops, just looking uh, for anything to do, put their hands on and earn a living. I'm going to speak to a number of youths here just to tell us what they feel about the unemployment uh, situation here in Nyeri. Thank you so much for joining us. Pengine ukianza na jina lako, uko live on NTV. Kisho niambie, unaisi vipi kuhusu unemployment katika nchi hii? Kwa majini mine to Harrison Moreithi, minu mkazi wapa Nyeri. Uh, kusama yu mambo ya yudhu ni selekali na tufinyiria sana. Because inuona saa hiyo meweka waze. Na uh, waze duona saa hiyo kuwa na retire. Sisi vijanadu duona saa hiyo kuwa opportunity. Because tuko na maidia. Sasa waze menye meka nyubani. Hana idea. Sasa wea ni kukula tu pesa tu. Nigeopa tu selekali president huru menye wana, 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 wana advice. Angalie mambo ya yudhu. Because the youth wakikosa kazi. Wanaza kupiga geta. Sasa hii sasa hii sasa hii hata mimi niko na hasa na tafuta kazi naenda kwa gava unaambiwa kuna kazi alafu na kuna pitishio mrango ya nyuma ndio upate kazi sasa inakuja inakuja hivyo then hiyo kazi unasikia imeisha lakini tunaona kwa serikali watu wana, wako na magari kubwa wanaiba na sisi vijanadi tunaumia na sisi ndio wachagua sasa kulikuwa tuangalia litwambia kitu kwanza kiingia kwa kiti atatushughulie kama sisi vijana tupate kazi lakini sasa hii kazi siku hizi hatuzioni tuna tunashukuliwa na wazee Hey. Thank you so much. Uh, let me speak to another one here. Thank you for joining us on NTV. Maybe start with your name. Tell us, uh, what do you feel about the recent appointments by the government and as, uh, as much as the youth in the country are looking for jobs? So, uh, my name is Kihara Njau and uh, according to this appointment, the president, uh, through his advisor, sir, has appointed old guards. Sir. We are here, we are youth, um, we have degrees. We have the capacity, but the present, I can't blame the present, I blame the advisors. Because uh, state cooperation, uh, we can handle, but uh, we are always told that we are leaders of tomorrow. My question, my question is, when is this tomorrow coming? So I'm not happy at all, and I think the present is not too late. Uh, those are the appointments, he, he should include youth or youthful people. And uh, this is a government you voted for, and probably they had so many promises uh, concerning the youth specifically, saying that uh, they're going to be given jobs, they're going to reduce the number of uh, youth who don't have jobs in the country. Probably you as a person, what do you think of the promises that the government made to the country and the youth in particular? I, I can just term them as fake promises because three years down the line we are not seeing any change. Eh? What we are seeing, we are seeing the old guard accumulating a lot of wealth and we going deep into poverty.
Thank you so much. Jo those are just some of the sentiments uh, from the youth here in Nyeri just uh, speaking about what they feel about this em unemployment situation. And remember, uh, you've had some of them complaining about the promises uh, that the government made uh, during the uh, last uh, campaign. And they're saying that they feel they've been sidelined as much as uh, this employment unemployment situation is in the country. Now I'm going to hand over you to my colleague Martin Maura in Moranga. Martin, what do the residents of Maura Say, of Moranga say about this. Thank you so much, my friend and colleague from Nyeri, Melita Olitengis. You have had very uh, different views from the people of Nyeri. Now we just want to talk to the people of County 021 here in Moranga. Each and every year we are seeing universities churn uh, students or even uh, we can call them youth with various degrees, even others with masters. But most of them keep on trekking complaining that there are no jobs yet we, we, we know that this country we are being told that the economy is growing and investors are setting up base income but we just want to get from the people of moranga what is happening in the in, in this country why so many youths who somebody has a master's somebody has a degree but he's he's a boda boda rider others are just doing other hooking business here in the country despite investing so much in the education uh, let me start by a gentleman over here welcome to ntv why do you think we have such high rate of unemployment among the youth in this country? Okay, one. Eh? Yeah, I, er, Mugambi Yedik is my name. Okay, I work with Moranga County Government. There is uh, incompetency. There is lack of uh, proper skills. There is lack of... Uh, okay, there are so many. I'll just mention a few. Mm -hmm. Lack of humility, patience, you know, you have no experience, you have just left the campus or the college that you've been uh, schooling, you have not gained the experience. The employer cannot just uh, take you, cannot just recruit you into a, in, in a field. First of all, you need, maybe you need to start from somewhere, but the majority of the youths are not giving in to that uh, particular offer. You just want to start from above. And it is not possible. Even those people who are getting actually employed at their old, old age, though we are saying it is free and fair for the government not to come down to 55 years as the retirement age, which is very okay. From my own opinion, it is very okay. But it is not possible because mo most of the guys do not understand that there is a patience, resilience. Maybe, do you think maybe some of the courses that are being offered in our in these uh, colleges and uh, higher learning institutions, do you think maybe we can call them in quotes bogus courses that are not marketable? That is why so many youths are, are tarmacking or tracking. Well, yeah. If uh, I get back, if I actually go back to the current CS education, CS Professor Magoa, he said. Take it. There are people without, without the know-how how technical skills are important in the country today. Because, one, okay, on the, uh, there's something that it is called the overrated degree mentality. You called it the over, overrated degree mentality. The, over, the overrated degree mentality that you are, you are going to do a degree, but apparently you stay without a job. It is not your fault. Okay, it is uh, maybe inadequate know-how. Okay. We don't know the impact of this uh, this course. Okay. But if you go, you went and did uh, probably maybe you did uh, something technical. Jo the job market is a is, it's at a stick, but it depends on what what you pursued, the skills you have in life, mm -hmm. the competency. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, let me talk to another gentleman over here. Just uh, j join us here and tell me, why do you think so many of the youths in this country are tarmacking despite having uh, relevant uh, documents or papers? Okay. It's just because of the lack of knowledge. Uh, you can create your own job opportunity. You can't wait for an opportunity to knock at your doorstep. You need to, you just, you don't have to sit there. You have to do something. 
each and every day you should think of a new idea go create your own job because um, in this current world that you are living technology keeps changing you need to go with the technology if there is no job go create your own job maybe do you think maybe we are choosy in what we do maybe somebody is talented in something but our parents are forcing us to follow you know they have that mentality of uh, soma wandikwe yet uh, somebody can rip because we, we see talent such as sports uh, is paying maybe what is your what is your take on that i think mm, somehow most people go in that direction but for our parents we need to t to tell them that this is a new generation you don't have to learn for you to get a job you can be having papers in your house but at the end you don't have work uh, you can create your own you can become a motorbike rider as long as you get food to feed your family yourself and life goes on okay thank you so much Okay. Uh, Olives, those are just some of the few views I've managed to grab from the residents of Moranga. And they're saying that do not choose, you have to start somewhere. Do not start from the treetop, just start below and you'll slowly be up there. Don't be choosy. Back to you, Olive. Uh, interesting views coming out of uh, Nyeri County first and then uh, let's get straight over to uh, Martin Mora in Muranga in what I considered very swanky. Uh, but uh, we had that gentleman in Nyeri County who said, you know, we had const the youth are constantly told you are the leaders of tomorrow. He wanted to know when is this tomorrow camping, coming and that listed some laughter from my panel. And then there's that gentleman we've had from in Muranga who works for, who works for the county government and he says you know the problem is incompetency uh, on the part of the youth he says they do not have the relevant skills and that they have this overrated mentality as far as their degrees are concerned edwin i'd like to come to you uh, and and you know the the guy in muranga talks about how you uh, the second gentleman who was interviewed in muranga county and he said you know nobody's going to come and okay. hand you an opportunity you're going to have to grab it mm -hmm. uh so how did you make the transition from saying okay i'm done with tamaking or even as i tamak i need to have to quote unquote hustle okay well olive um let me speak to the majority youth out there who have not gone to the university who have not saved their foot in college because that was my story and those guys who have started from nothing well I've started from hawking, just normal things. I used to struggle with city council here, hawking things. You're running up and down on the road. And then I went to cooking chapati on the streets, selling 10 bob, making very little money. And the gradual growth. So, well, the moment I cleared high school, I come from a family where we were not able to do much. I was not able to go to college or anything. So I had to look for an opportunity immediately. So what I did was I ran to all the youth offices trying to get a job, trying to get a job here and there. Rent to this, rent to this. I am very idealistic. I'm gifted with that and I thank God that's why I went to run to do to, to learn how to be a strategic person and run companies. And okay, when you say youth organizations, could you name a few? Mm, let me start from my county. I rent to Machawood, nullified, nothing, didn't get anything. I ran to Weso Fund to get some funding for something. I didn't get anything. I went to the Ministry of Youth and said, I'm capable of doing one, two, three, but the fact that I didn't have a degree in my, in my, in my, I mean my papers, I didn't have anything, they didn't give me the opportunity. So I had to go to the private sector. At that time, you're running, um, let me talk about uh, this young person who is really trying to look for a job and who is really struggling. And they reach a point, they say, yes, you mentioned that uh, they shouldn't ask for money. But trust me, you've worked in an intern somewhere for somebody. According to the 48 laws of power, you use people to shine, but they don't shine. Now, this is what most leaders use. Huh? You have worked for somebody, internship. You have done your four months, five months. They are not giving you anything. They don't know where you get your fare to go to that office. They don't know what you did get to eat. And then at the end of the time, they tell you you're not qualified to work with us, and they give you a recommendation. You've made them shine. You've used your idea you existed, and this person has not helped you. And, so there's, we'll and there's actually a gentleman on Twitter who agrees yes. with you. His handle is at KE Cheza, and he says, it is naive to expect someone to intern or work for free, yet they have to make their way to your organization yes. every day for the three months or so. Yes. Let's be honest, it is impossible to work for free for just experience. 
crazy. Let's be realistic. Yeah. I'm mm. coming to intern with you when you are... Ca okay, actually, for, I'm, I'm coming to intern in a huge organization. What am I going to do? I'm going to be using and existing all my skills to build this company and to keep making the CEO, wherever it is at the top, shine. Well, I'm suffering. I can't come ask you for fair because it says clearly I should not be able. So if you're being paid, the company I'm coming to intern for is running, Come on, let's be realistic. These young people need something. Put someone, even if it's 5,000, transportation cost done. Because I'm looking at a position. I, I, I was running all these things and then I said, none, enough is enough. I'm not going to be a knocker in this city anymore. I'm not going to, 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 to continue selling chapati and I'm not going to work for nobody. So I decided, fine, I can hook. What else can I do? I can create more businesses. And yes, I get, went to the next level and started knowing how to run businesses. Funny enough, I created my own things. Oh, so what, what, are you doing, what are you doing now? Right now, um, I'm what they call a strategist. So what I do is I pick a company from the ground and I build up to the next level. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's a field that has rare people. So I'm good in employing. I'm good in choosing the right people to sit in whatever position they have to sit in. And well, with that, I've run a number of companies. So I, 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 I normally just pick a specific position. Uh, no, I come pick a company that is growing and I run it to the next level. But at the same time, I have my one, two, three businesses of mine that I run here and there. Uh, one that deals with CCTV security installation and the other one is dealing with uh, supplements where we are so, trying so to it's, help it's, people. So it's not true that the youth are crybabies, Deline? No, they do. They're not, but at some yeah. point it is. Because of the pain, the scratch point to start with. Okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll ask you to respond first and then I'll come to you. Yes. I just wanted to briefly point out that, yes, I do agree. I mean, as youth agenda, remember we, we are an institution. We have volunteer interns. We call them volunteer interns because, honestly, when you're compensating between five to 10,000 shillings, you don't consider that pay. That is just allowance to enable them at least be able to buy lunch and also come. It's 2019. No one can do that. And I like the fact that you actually said before you got, before you, you, you graduated or you didn't have a degree. The reason is there are many young people who are not in employment, not in education, and not in training. So what about those young people? Do we really assume that when they're saying 86% of the uh, unemployed population, we're actually talking about people with degrees? No. So then that means that we need to have systemic reforms that also include the people who do not have the papers that we, we so call for. And remember, personally, as an employer, I'm not, I'm, I'm not mesmerized by papers. Yes, I did have to get papers because we were fighting and we wanted to get to the next level. Now that we've gotten there, then what are we doing to pull everybody up? How about we saying that a, a requirement for this, uh, let's say, position or opportunity for a young person should be the experience in ABCD? An experience cannot be nullified. So my point in just interjecting was that yes I'm not saying that don't give the young people at least even fair to get to work but then again let's not have the young people expect and demand because if you do that then you won't even get that opportunity to start with if right. you won't even get that small apprenticeship or internship in an organization mm. you know okay. if you focus your mind on getting the experience and yes, this is, this is, we call upon all em employers. You can't have someone come in and go out, even if it's just messenger services. Because most interns, again, you won't be given the high HD equipment, the PM Sony PMWs and whatever to handle. You'll be given a small, those, those other cameras that even if, they, if, even if you mess something up, they can be replaced. So for you to actually humbly get to that level where you're being given more work and more responsibility, then there is no employer who will also give you that big responsibility and not give you compensation. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Deline, you know, how do you get over, or do the Kenyan youth need to get over the Serikali to Saidiya attitude? <laughs> well, definitely we should. We actually need a, we need a mind shift as far as employment, or rather youth employment is concerned. And uh, in the spirit of internship, just like Diana has said, I feel definitely the youth have to be compensated for the transport, of course, and for the meals they have here and there. But actually, you'd be surprised to know that 
for you to intern in some of these organizations, you actually pay them yeah. to intern yeah. there. Mm -hmm. So this kind of an intern, you're supposed to pay, like in my field, in the psychology field, when you go to intern, you pay to intern there. So such kind of a person, where do I get the transfer? I had the know? same experience at KBC, yeah. actually. We had to pay I them. Because, <laughs> yeah. well, fine, I am, yeah. Yeah. as much yeah. as, yeah. as, yeah. as, yeah. as this intern, fine, you're very intentional with what you want. And bottom line, you're there because you need the experience. But after I pay this organization, how do I go to work? What do I eat? You see, how do I commute, basically? So I think those are some of the things that then we need to review. And probably, like, I think I can comment the government. Recently, I saw they started doing waivers for interns in companies. So such an initiative, if they can hold on to that, then it can be good progress for us. All right. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. so let me just read out a couple of tweets. Uh, overtaxation is killing industries and small businesses where youth seek to venture. We need favorable policies and tax rates to encourage SMEs. I think you brought that up. Yeah. Enoch, and uh, your university actually is really proud of you for being here. They've, <laughs> they've tweeted uh, that, you're, yes, we are proud of to have Enoch Masaki, digital communication graduate student, as one of the panelists to discuss youth unemployment on NTV today. All right. Uh, we also have another tweet here. And... Uh, this gentleman says it's sad this company called Kenya should be closed for renovations and uh, somebody else says there's no employment because the economy is not growing at a rate equivalent to our population growth let's not blame the youth there are too many compared to opportunities out there create favorable policies for SMEs and lower tax rates all right Edwin okay. no, um only w w w what I'm looking at is uh, the pain all these young people are going through because we are there. We are still trying to get into specific. Like, we have the capability to do it. Oliver, um, uh, how would I put it to you? Given a chance to run, for example, the NE, uh, NEA, I would be able to say I can do it for a span of six months. There's this company uh, called uh, CEO uh, for six months uh, from the UK. If our country, Kenya, can take that example of CEO for one month or two months. It would be really easy to test these people, like the, the youth offices. Take this youth, run for one month, another one come run for one month. Let's see your capabilities. This would really work well. And then another thing that is going to kill us completely is the double taxation. I can see, I understand that now we are the fifth, is it the fifth or seventh country? I don't know. That, uh, um, I think fifth or sixth, that is now uh, introducing double taxation. So the people who are truly trying to set up businesses like us, now we are going to fight to, 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 to handle the double taxation kind of a setup. That is challenging on our side. Double taxation is really hitting at us high in this country. You're looking at me not paying. It is said if you're wanting, uh, if you're making at least half five million and above, or at least in a month five million, you have to pay 35 percent. So when you include the double taxation, where are we going to? So you're saying uh, basically creating a favorable economic yeah, environment is critical. Completely. All right. From the government. Okay, I want us to start uh, making our concluding yes. remarks as far as this subject is concerned. But uh, let's get an update from the courts. The Malindi MP Aisha Juma and her bodyguard Geoffrey O. Kuto Otieno have been released on a 1 million shilling bond with a similar surety amount of 500,000 shillings or with a, a similar sorry with a similar surety amount or a 500,000 shilling cash bill and that to report to the Malindi DCIO on October the 22nd Karim Rajan is in court I'm sure on NTV Sasa we will uh, get some pictures coming out of the court there the Mombasa High Court um, so let's transition back to the topic of this morning uh, which way forward, Enoch? Okay. When I was working, well, sorry, when I was uh, taking the lift off uh, your building, there's one of the values I read, um, continuous improvement and innovation. I don't know whether that's among of you, your values at NTV. This is what I'm, I'm telling the youth out there. We don't have to wait for the government to do anything for us. We just don't have to continue ranting and saying, you know, we want them to allocate some funds, which will never happen. Like the gentleman from Nyeri said, when is this future coming? That is exactly what I'm asking myself. After graduating, where am I going to? Will I start again tamaking the same way I was tamaking when I was doing my undergrad? I mean, that is another thing that I'm figuring out how it's going to be. So this is what we ought to start doing. I love the power digital new media communication has given us. We 
currently do not have strict regulations other than the ones um, Edwin is talking about in terms of double taxation. I mean, let us not really be scared of what will come now that it hasn't been implemented also. Let us start creating ideas. And this is a platform that can go viral. Nowadays, just a small tweet of like uh, what the KU student did last, last week. I mean, the other time when there, were, uh, uh, there was a strike in KU. I mean, that small video went viral so fast. I mean, how if that was an idea, an entrepreneur idea? I mean, how if that was something that you, you, you are you're trying to advocate online and mean, maybe trying to source for funds for your own idea? I mean, the, we, the youth in Kenya are very brilliant. They have ideas, but we are just so scared of going there and, you know, pitching and getting proposals to people who can fund, people who can actually donate and tell us, hey, if this is your idea, what do you want and why do you want it, uh, you know, to happen this one in the future? Where do you see it? And then um, uh, uh, another suggestion I would be like, let us be guided by an entrepreneurial mind. Let us not be the guys who have papers and then we just have to go and drop CVs in every corporate institution every morning with our brown envelope and then expect, you know, manner to come from heaven. I mean, one, if you, do not have, if you do not have connections, I am for sure telling the youth that you're not gonna get this job. Kenya is a place of who do you know, not what do you have. I mean, I can assure you, not what, what you have. I, you're saying I, that's been proven by the recent government appointments. <laughs> exactly. That is what we think on the newspaper. <laughs> so um, just to give hope to the youth out there who are listening right now this morning is like, get the entrepreneur idea, get the concept, go and pitch. You shall get somebody who likes it. You shall get somebody who wants to work with you. And that's how we are going, we are going forward. Okay. This is what I did when I thought that the skills I had were not really working. So I went back to graduate. I, I went into the radio studio where I said, let me just start practicing what I thought I never had. One at least to push my career, because when I leave, when I'll be coming, I'll leave, tell you guys, you know, I need a job in a radio station. Where have you been doing this, you know? That is okay. the skill I want. Secondly, I, I thought we need to go into uh, food industry, whereby, by the way, you will never go wrong in the food industry. Everybody eats. Every morning, in the afternoon, people oh. eat. All right. So I, I said, let me just start selling honey. And that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, you're now. selling honey now? I'm I selling should, honey. I should try some of that. I hope <laughs> Please you do. Uh, Diana, so I'm give you, if we can limit you. it to about 30 seconds each. Sure. Yes, sure. Uh, my closing remarks to this would, would be, again, like you're saying, what's the way forward? Just the solutions. And I'm thinking of curriculum revision, which is what is going on, employability and skill force. I'm thinking of uh, number two being promoting supervised internships and apprenticeship. apprenticeship. That cannot be overlooked. It has been a, pro a proven successful way of transforming a society. We also have supporting youths to create their own formal and informal employment opportunities. And finally, just a holistic programming that has unbiased approaches. The current state of affairs is that we have bias, bias from, right from the executive, from the leadership of the country, bias against the young people, bias in calling young people thieves, and we're saying that has to stop. So let us have unbiased approaches to have Having holistic programming that actually incubates us to be the leaders of today and take over the mantle. The young people must, the old people must go to rest. Okay, yes. wow. Have All a right. break. That was quite punchy. Yes. Edwin? I have an, uh, a, 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 a saying that I apply into my life and all the people that I talk to on an everyday. It's simple as that. I tell my young friends, do not accept to be referred as the future leaders because which, which, which day, which month, which year, which which generation are you going to be that leader if you're not given the opportunities? I mean, do we have a year or a month for you to be that future leader? We cannot keep being referred as future leaders when the opportunities that we can grow in under mentorship are not being given to us. So let's not accept this thing of uh, 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 being called future leaders. Let's, if we can't be given opportunities, start today. Take your chances. Do, do, do the impossible. Go, decide to start something of your own, and then let these people find you as a good leader when you have something tangible that you'll be running by yourself, All when right. you have something that you've accomplished by yourself. Okay. Just All way. right, yeah. Deline, I'll leave you to have the last word on this. Okay, first, as youth, we should realize that the future is now. The future is now. Secondly, let us work around with this mentality that nobody owes you anything. And by that, have a self-talk, Sit down, look at what you can do, what skills do you have, what changes can you make, and make something for yourself.